And I'll start with uh, Nerdessa Johnson. Thank you, Paul Nerdessa Johnson. Um, I wondered what, great speech as ever, um, great, great message, what state are you guys at in terms of looking at police retention on photographs? You talked a lot about DNA, which is a, a big issue, which people are aware of. I went to a presentation by the Metropolitan Police a couple of weeks ago, talking about the new technology they've got that matches photographs, and they can take a photograph of a suspect and match it with their database of hundreds of thousands, yes. if not millions of people. Now, the point I made to the police superintendent making this presentation is, this database of photos you've got, are these all guilty people, or have you got pictures of people who you arrested and then uh, let go without charge? And he said, well, yes, it does include lots of people who we arrested and let go without charge, who were therefore going to be innocent. And I said, well, what the hell are you still doing keeping their photo? Yes. And he said, well, we can, under Section 64A of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, thank you very much. <laughs> and I said, I suspect that this government will have something to say about that. Are they acting on that? Yes, um, it's certainly on the Big Brother Watch agenda, and we came to it slightly tangentially, if I can put it like that, because um, of our opposition, uh, it sounds like we oppose everything, but uh, <laughs> our, our work um, in and around Google Street View, uh, where one of the things we were pointing out was that although the images that are scanned on Street View and then dumped on, online have an automatic filter that may blur out your face, yeah. somewhere in Google HQ, there's an unblurred version of people's faces. And one of the responses we got is, well, the Rosas do it. So, you know, we're just shooting what you can see in the street, so why shouldn't we? Uh, and my answer to that was, well, the, the police shouldn't do it either. Uh, and that's something we're working on. But what I would stress about that is, they currently don't have the capacity to churn through that in the way that they do with fingerprints or DNA samples. I, I should stress that in the bill, it's not just DNA samples you have a right to have destroyed if you're an innocent person picked up by the police and then released without charge or acquitted. It's also your fingerprints. And fingerprints, of course, can be run through much more easily and systematically have been in this country for some time. So that's um, since 2001. So that's right um, that <coughs> fingerprints and DNA must come first because that's what the police are cranking through on a regular basis. Once we've won that, I want to take up the, um, the photograph fight um, as well. But it's important, Jonathan, I think, to stress that it's not, as my Google point, I suppose, hinted at, it's not just the state, of course, that can commit these sorts of intrusions. There is an iPhone app now, which you can take a picture of um, someone with and then see if the facial recognition technology can match them to Apple's database. Um, and so, you know, of course, some people will have uh, consented to having their picture taken. Some people will have put the, an image online, which they say is of them, may or may not be, uh, and kept come up with a hit on, on the Apple I, iPhone. I, I can think of nobody who would want to use that as soon as they get their acts together more, let's edit this bit out of the tape so they don't think of it, uh, than the police. Um, I think that's a capacity the police would love to have. So that's going to become an increasingly important issue. But my first concern, because it's taken so bloody long, and what the government's been doing has plainly been so wrong on DNA, is to win DNA first. And if we just, I want to nail this one all the way in. I, I don't want to put the nail, a fraction in and then move on to the next nail, because the buggers will pull it out again. Um, I wonder if you could talk a bit about the hereditary problems. So you were mentioning earlier how we've got a surveillance commissioner who's not that interested in surveillance, and an information commissioner, as you know, who's not that interested in privacy. So how would you fix that? Well, I think I happen to have very high regard for Rob Halfenepi, and, um, and I think that uh, whilst it needs fleshing out, there may be a great deal of room in the idea of an Internet Bill of Rights, uh, to which there is somebody who holds the rest of uh, actors in the state sphere to account. <coughs> Certainly, there's no interest from the Information Commissioner's Office in doing that. The ICO uh, faced in the Google Street View saga, which, <coughs> one minute recap, was when Google sent their cars roaming around the whole country, and not only did they take lots of people's images without asking, they took lots of people's emails without asking. They captured um, material that was being transmitted over Wi-Fi, they snatched email addresses, they snatched passwords, they snatched bank account details. First of all, they denied it happened. Secondly, they denied it mattered. It was a bit like a European process. Uh, they, this bill won't apply to you. OK, this bill is happening, but it doesn't matter. OK, it's happening, it does matter, but it's too late to do anything about it. Uh, it was just the same with Google Street View. They denied that they'd done it. They got caught out on that lie. Then they admitted they'd done it, but it didn't matter. Then it emerged that it was people's emails and passwords that had been captured, bank account details. And at no stage was the information commissioner interested at all. 
And so he probably thought I was a bit nasty because I kept having a go at him, the poor love, every time he released a, a, a pathetic statement that was apologising for the worst abuses in the sector he's supposed to police. <laughs> um, so we kept punching him. And in the end, they came to the robust conclusion that Google had done something wrong, but they weren't going to find them. So well done, Information Commissioner. Uh, and that was the outcome, as you know, like pulling teeth, 18 months of, of having whacking Google around the park as much as one could. And you know, by the end of that process, Google were, just wanted it to be over. They, would have, they wouldn't have contested anything. You know, just, just hit me one more time on the jaw so I pass out, was Google's attitude. We just want this to be finished with. And it was the Information Commissioner holding them up, saying, come on, Google, you've got one more round in you. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure you need to give up yet. It was absurd. It was, you know, it was really defending the worst um, offender in this field. So um, we need to fix the regulatory framework. And my first instinct would be to scrap these separate silos of commissioners information commissioner looking after one thing, surveillance commissioner looking after another, and I would have a proper regulator who's got a genuine remit over privacy, who can say this kind of surveillance has intruded upon your privacy in this way, which believe it or not, if the briefs cross over, you can't do. So I, I, would, I would start by doing that. There is a sensitivity, I, I know, about the intelligence commissioner, or another commissioner, uh, about what happens with um, the surveillance being conducted by MI5 and so forth. But I mean, putting that even to one side for the moment, the sort of intrusion that happens to most of us all the time that the ICO is supposed to be interested in, uh, we need a different commissioner. The ICO is good at doing freedom of information requests. They should be spun off, let them take care of that, and we need a genuine commissioner to deal with the problems that I've, I've been talking about. You talked about the possible creation of a, a British Bill of Rights, a, a, a recasting of the 1689 Act or whatever. Um, my only query I've got is you won't get to write it, will you? It'll be matrix chambers. Aren't you worried about the sort of people who will actually be writing that Bill yeah. of Rights? And will that not be just as bad, if not worse, than what we have from the ACS or anything? <laughs> as far as um, your point was concerned, Gwen, of course I have that fear. Of course I have that fear. But let's um, not miss the fact that a draftsman wrote this bill. A draftsman wrote the Freedom Bill uh, that I've been waving around. And it may not be perfect, um, but I'd like, with the risk of immodesty, you're right, I'm, we are not going to be writing it, but I would like to think that the Freedom Association and Big Brother Watch and organisations like ours have had something to do with the fact that all of these issues we've been campaigning on are in there to, to one degree or another. You know, We held an event, Dominic Grieve came along, made a commitment that you'd need a warrant before entering private property, and it's in the bill. Now, we may not get it, it may not be perfect, but it's bloody there, and it makes me proud uh, that that's there. We've got to hold these buggers to account, Gwen. And in the end, if you can screw them down tight enough, they're being held to account, Noddy could write it. <laughs> <laughs>